It's a warm welcome to your viewers as we meet on this week's episode of Crime Watch, proudly brought to you by your police service, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, to inform you of our roles and operations in a bid to rid our community of all criminal elements. I'm your host, Tendeke Dandarasi. It's good to have you along. We kickstart our program with murder and robbery cases which occurred in Manikalen province, where the Chara Pipena Longa arrested some accused persons who belonged to a machet looting gang codenamed Tim Baka, let us hear more. We managed to arrest the accused by the name Patrick Magwenzi, who cleared five counts of robberies which he committed in and around the Penalong. Uh, we pursued the information which were given by our informers, and on the first day of March 2022, uh, we received information to the effect that the second accused person by the name Jefferson Tanatswa Chabata was at Old West compound. We teamed up with my fellow officers and we swiftly acted and managed to arrest him. Uh, the accused was a wanted person in connection with the murder case which occurred at Singai Farm. The accused person was taken by C.I.D. Norton for further investigations. We managed to arrest other two suspects in connection with the murder cases which occurred in Kwekwe, Kadoma and Mazowe uh, and investigations are still in progress. There are drugs which are commonly abused in Zimbabwe, which include bronchlecope syrup, heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, and LSD. These drugs are not locally manufactured. They are getting into the country through unscrupulous means. As the ZRP, we have deployed our officers at the borders and at airports as an interdiction measure to prevent these drugs from coming into the country. We work hand in glove with other stakeholders like members of the public, we give us information on the coming in of such drugs or the moving out of such drugs as well. The Medicines Control Authority of Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe National Army and Zimra. In light of this, Crime Watch caught up with the Zimbabwe Revenue Authority Zimra Canine Section at Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport. Zimbabwe Revenue Authority is responsible for the mobilization of revenue with facilitating sustainable compliance with fiscal and customs law for the economic development of Zimbabwe. So as K-9 units, we are found in the customs division of the Zimbabwe Revenue Authority, and we are charged with that sustainable facilitation of compliance with customs law. In doing so, we find K-9 unit is presence is found in all major ports of entry, including Robert Mugabe International Airport, the Arrest Central Sorting Office, Forbes Border Post, Whitebridge Border Post, Victoria Falls, and we have got an outreach program that takes us to all and every entry of Zimbabwe. At the Arrest Central Sorting Office, when we receive international mail, it is first subjected to the scanning process. An X ray scanner will inspect without opening the parcel to see the contents of the parcels. Here in the corners of the parcels, you can see illicit substances like 
and customs, the pharmacists called drugs, drug of abuse, methamphetamine, cocaine. So at the X-ray scanner, it can give us the initial indication that there is a presence of the drug. After the X-ray scanning processes, the puzzles are laid down for our canines to conduct another non-intrusive inspection. Here, the canine will move along the rows of the puzzles, inspecting each and every puzzle to determine the contents of the parcel. If there's a contraband in any of the parcels, the canine will indicate to the canine officer, the one who's handling the dog, that there is, is something suspicious in this parcel. From there, that parcel now becomes subject matter for further examination and is taken to the examination table, scrutinized. We will try to identify what exactly is the substance. Some substances, we just identify them by sight. Talk of common substance like marijuana, you can all see this marijuana. Other substances like cocaine, ephedrine, we have to subject them to field tests, upon which we will confirm that this is indeed a, a drug of abuse. Then this one is now subject to, to prosecution. A, a post of detention is raised against the contraband and the prosecution process will start. This matter will not be ended over, so we will take orders like CID drugs and police to do their job. We have sniffer dogs here at the Robert Mugabe International Airport and they, their purpose is to identify the prohibited drugs and medicines. Once the bag has been identified, we put a, a sticker so that we monitor the bag until the client collects the bag. We we'll ask the client uh, to put the uh, bag through the scanner as well. Then after that, we we'll go with the client to the search bay. Then the revenue officer and the canine officer will do the physical examination of the bag. And you can now see some of the products that were in the bag to show why our canine dog managed to identify this bag. So once we have done this, that's when the revenue officer we issue a notice of seizure to the client. Then from there on, we we'll report to the police so that that client can be prosecuted. We have posted a remarkable success stories that would include interception of 9 kgs of cocaine at Arenda National Airport, 3 kgs of methamphetamine at the same venue again. We have intercepted so many kgs of food cut at the Arrest Central Sorting Office. Zimbabwe Kenyan Unit has also seen success stories in areas like Bite Bridge, where a lot of pharmaceutical substances that were being smuggled in contravention of necessary regulation, that is, uh, Medicine Control Authority of Zimbabwe and the Dangerous Drugs Act. Uh, you've seen the interception of bronchial, among other things. We have also recorded one of major successes in Bite Bridge where we intercepted endangered species, namely the abalone fish that was worth six million runs. In Nyamapanda border post, we have intercepted more than 4,000 kgs of cannabis that was stashed in a, in a consignment of wheat bran with a street value of over four million US dollars. Let us join hands to bring drug abuse and trafficking to an end. On that note, we take a short break. Join us shortly. Welcome to the second segment of Crime Watch. CID Vehicle Theft Squad Darare arrested some accused persons for car theft. They would also use the stolen cars to commit other crimes. Let us hear more. During the period extending from uh, October 2021 to February 2022, we have been receiving numerous cases of robbery of motor vehicles, which occurred in South Lee Park area. What would happen is that uh, the criminals, they would masquerade as stranded uh, genuine people who are looking for transport. Once they are offered the transport, they would then attack the victims along the way. They would take their valuables, including the motor vehicle. 
and they drive it away. Mm -hmm. The criminals would also use the same motor vehicles to commit other similar crimes. We managed to apprehend these criminals. So far, we arrested four of them. Amongst the criminals, there was one lady and three young men. What it means is whenever you are driving along these roads, you don't trust anyone. So far, we have recovered uh, three motor vehicles and uh, various properties. The accused persons are currently in remand awaiting trial. Some of the recovered property has not yet been identified, so we encourage members of the public to come forward and try and identify their property which was stolen through uh, robbery of motor vehicles. So, if you have a property, you can see that 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 you can see Foot On this week's Traffic Safety segment, the Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe hosted their 8th edition Road Safety Journalist Awards appreciating journalists for spreading road safety messages. The Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe Vice Board Chairperson gave the welcome remarks. We are gathered here to acknowledge, celebrate, and reward media practitioners for their effective communications about road safety in the media. All forms of media could play a key role to raise awareness on road safety. They can disseminate preventive messages and promote safe, safe behaviors, and at the same time, increasing people's knowledge and understanding of the gravity of the road safety problem, as well as advocating for safer roads and systems. The Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe board chairperson gave the keynote address on behalf of the guest of honor, Minister of Transport and Infrastructural Development, Honorable Felix Timona. According to the World Health Organization report, every six seconds, someone is killed or maimed on the world's roads. In low and middle income countries, the cost of road traffic injuries is estimated at up to $100 billion a year. Money that could be spent on schools, hospitals, and other more important forms of economic development. The media indeed have a role to play in so far as turning the traffic jungle in Zimbabwe. The behavior of some road users, the condition of our roads, the human error attributed to most road crashes, negative effects of traffic congestion, and interpretation of traffic laws must be reported to inform the public. Above all, this reporting gives a wake-up call to responsible authorities to review existing legislation and to formulate new road safety laws and policies. I'm humbled by the commendable public-private partnerships that now exist between Traffic Safety Council and all the sponsors of this 8th edition of the award. Allow me to congratulate all the 42 entrants of this 8th edition. May I further congratulate the 10 nominees here present? Out of these, they shall be the overall winners. With regards to the award ceremony that uh, our sister Parastato is hosting tonight, we are pleased to partner them. And we just hope that um, these awards are also going to help in ensuring that um, our road carnage is actually reduced in our country. Journalists, they preach uh, road safety, and uh, as you know, the role of insurers and reinsurers is to pay claims uh, when they 
preach uh, road safety, it, it, it helps us uh, in reducing the number of claims we have to pay. And uh, we can divert those funds to other uh, needy uh, areas. Yes, it's worth it. Uh, yes, during the lockdown, a lot has been happening. Uh, businesses are, and people are hustling to try and make up for, for things that have been lost. But we just encourage everyone to be sober in our movements. Let's be sober so that we, we are able to save lives. I also want to dedicate especially this award to all the those victims who also died as a result of road crashes. Because as for me, it's actually something which is hard to I lost a brother-in-law through road crashes. So every time we need a sort of road crashes, as a journalist, I'm forced to especially to preach this gospel of safety. That is drivers, everyone have got the responsibility. We held our eighth uh, edition of the Road Safety uh, Journalist Awards. The purpose of these awards is to reward uh, members of the media fraternity we have been reporting on road safety. We believe journalism is important to road safety because one, it informs and helps our people to be empowered and then they engage and then they are able to voice their concerns as far as road safety. So therefore to us, Journalism is also a, de a development tool. I would also want to take this opportunity to congratulate uh, firstly all the participants and the winners. The President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, His Excellency Dr. Emerson Lambuzo Mnangagwa, recently promoted senior officers of the Zimbabwe Republic Police. The Commissioner General of Police conferred the badges of rank to the promoted senior officers. It gives me much joy to address you at this momentous occasion where we are conferring badges of rank to the newly promoted senior officers. Allow me to begin by congratulating all the officers before us on your elevation to the next of superintendent and chief superintendent. Promotions in the inner organization are an important human resources management tool for rewarding good performance. The Zimbabwe Public Police, like any contemporary organization, religiously undertakes promotion exercise with a view to reward good performance and dedication to duty across the rank of fire. I wish to extend my profound gratitude to the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, His Excellency, Comrade Dr. Iggy Nanawa, for promoting 26 superintendents to the rank of chief superintendent and 61 chief inspectors to the rank of superintendent. I am therefore confident that the officers receiving their new badges of rank possess requisite knowledge, skills, attitudes, and competencies to drive the Zimbabwe Public Police forward in attaining objectives set out in the Security Strategic Plan Horizon 2025. Ladies and gentlemen, discipline is the cornerstone of our organization as it defines our character and essence. You should always remember that discipline begins with you. Indeed, you cannot hope to maintain discipline among your, among your subordinates if you are not disciplined. Similarly, I would like to underscore the importance of combating corruption within the organization and beyond. The state of corruption is no doubt the country's number one enemy. Hence, as 
police commander, you have the duty to spread your goods and lead our society of corruption. The Zimbabwe Republic Police joined the rest of the world in celebrating the International Women's Day at a function held in Arari Gardens recently. The Deputy Minister of Women Affairs, Community, Small and Medium Enterprises Development was the guest of honor. On the 8th of March, our beautiful country Zimbabwe joins the rest of the world in commemorating the International Women's Day. On this day, we celebrate the economic, political, and social achievements of women, their courage and significant determination in contributing to the country's development and well-being. It is also a day to reflect on challenges being faced by women, including issues of gender-based violence, and progress made in the advancement of women in pursuit of gender equality. It is therefore indeed a great honor and privilege for Zimbabwe to be part of this international commemoration. The international theme for this year is gender equality for a sustainable tomorrow. While our national theme is gender mainstreaming, and women empowerment in climate change and disaster risk management. The day is important in acknowledging the voices of women and taking note of their diversity, their different roles and circumstances. It is the day that gives women a platform to share their common concerns so that they work together towards a common goal. It is imperative that we economically empower women and girls as a sustainable way to achieve gender equality, and this can be achieved through various empowerment programs that my ministry and partners provide, such as access to finance and markets, capacity building, provision of technology, and work, workspace, amongst others. Before we come to the end of this week's episode, here are some of the people on the police wanted list. CID Commercial Crimes Division is appealing for information on the whereabouts of George Tatenda Saruchena, whose last known address is number 213 Pina Road, Prospect Waterfall, Sarari. He is wanted in connection with a case of fraud. In Police is looking for Philip Kafkatema, age 35, for a murder case which he committed in 2017 and has been on the run since then. Anyone with information that may help in the location of these people can contact any nearest police station or contact us on the following details. Visit our website www.zrp.gov.zw or email us on feedback at zrp.gov.zw. You can also link with us on our Twitter handle at Police Zimbabwe. We are also accessible on our YouTube channel Zimbabwe Republic Police. If you fail to reach us through any of these communication channels, we have a National Complaints Desk, which is manned 24-7, ready to offer you service, and the number is 0242-703-631. We have come to the end of this week's episode. It has been a pleasure having you along. Remember to create a conducive environment for gender equality today for a sustainable tomorrow. Break the bias. Until we meet again next time, pleasant view. Thank you.